and I'm back from Japan. As you can obviously tell from my fancy rice hat that I got when I was at Mount Fuji. But yeah, I'm finally back in the USA. Back at, <laughs> you sound a bit British there, or Australia, but yeah, I'm back in the USA. I've already been uh, doing a lot of scripting on the 75th episode on Forgotten Media, so I... In fact, I think I just got done scripting the whole thing. I'll go over it, and then we can go into... I can go into working on it. But yeah, back from Japan, it was quite an exciting trip. So this is kind of a video telling me... Telling you of a few things. So obviously, this is yet another unscripted video. Because I just feel like doing it. But yeah, the trip the trip to the Japan. That was quite an experience over there. Flying, getting on a plane, and getting up in the air for about 13 hours. As well as dealing with jet lag, that was the biggest thing we had to deal with, was the whole different time zones and whatnot. That was quite the experience. But yeah. And then, um, we did a lot of touring. That was basically the gist of it. We did a lot of touring in Japan, and that was really cool. We got to see a lot of sights and went to, um, people wanted me to go to Akihabara, and I did. I went to Akihabara, I went to some of the shops. There was a lot of shops selling like all kinds of old merchandise and manga and everything. But aside from that, we also did a lot of uh, sightseeing with other places. Like, of course, from the hat here, we went to Mount Fuji. And we actually climbed Mount Fuji. We got to... Like, the way that starts with Mount Fuji, there's about a few different stations. So you get on the bus, and it takes you up to Station 5. And from there, you start hiking up the mountain. So I did that, and... The way, me and my family were pretty much on this trip the whole time for three weeks. So we went up to the mountain, and we got up all the way to Station 7. And that's as far as we went, because so it was quite the hike. The highest, at the very top is Station 9. That's the very top of the summit. But we only made it to 7. Because, yeah, we didn't make it to the top, but hey, we actually climbed Mount Fuji, so that was pretty cool. And then we also went to my sister's school because my sister lives in Japan for a few years and she teaches English so we got to visit the school there. It was very nice and another interesting thing we got to do was participate in a tea ceremony when we were touring around the school. That was that was quite the once in a lifetime experience over there. Well yeah it was really cool. A lot of I went to a lot of shops mostly especially with um, finding shops mostly a lot of used shops so not much on the you know, what's popular in Japan, because I have no idea what's, uh, you know, cultural differences and whatnot. But yeah, I went to a lot of used shops, used games, used stores. In fact, when it came to finding games that were only sold in Japan, I had a, <laughs> I had a, quite the field trip going there and looking through all of those games. I had no idea what they said because they were in Japanese. But I'm like, oh my gosh, so many of these games that were only released in Japan, I don't know what to choose for Forgotten Media. <laughs> But I made, um, I got a good amount of games. I showed maybe one or two of them on my Twitter account. That was the Japanese PS2, PS1 and whatnot. But it was quite interesting. And another interesting thing is that when we went to the used game store, one of the ones we did, the guy at the counter was, you know, checking the disc and cleaning them off. And he actually showed them to the customer to see if it looked good or not. And that was quite interesting. I'm like, hey, this is something GameStop needs to take on. <laughs> But yeah, it was quite, um, aside from the shops and whatnot, the Japan itself was very nice, very oriental with its culture and themes, and it's very green over there, very green with its fields and mountains and everything, and we went there in the summer, so it wasn't really that cold or anything, in fact, it was like humid, it was humid as hell <laughs> on a lot of days, so it was quite, uh, quite interesting, we mostly had to wear shorts, like, every day, most of the time. But yeah, that was yeah, that was quite the burden to deal with all that heat and everything. But it was really cool. Not a lot to see a lot of fancy stuff. Like they were pretty good with uh, festivals with their own culture. So I think we went to two of them. The first one was the Numata Festival because it was real close to us, and then we went to the Star Festival, which was one of my favorites because it was very nice and fancy with sparkling lights, very oriental. Because we also went and toured around uh, one of the castles or so next to the star festival at night that was really cool but yeah that was nice a lot of fun times here and there the one thing i'm not missing though is driving around in japan because in the u.s you know the driver's seat is on the left side and you have to drive in a certain direction 
Well, over there in Japan, it's the exact opposite. So, I didn't do any driving over there. I did get a license, um, like a, what is it called? I can't remember. It's like a paper or an envelope that says, oh, hey, you have the right to drive around in foreign countries and whatnot. But I didn't do any driving. That was more of an emergency thing. <coughs> so, yeah, we did a lot of driving around. And when it comes to driving over there, it's quite a... Quite interesting because the roads are very, very narrow. They're very small. They're not as big as they are in the U.S. and whatnot. And when it comes to people driving over there, they tend to, <laughs> they tend to take risks. They tend to take risks. They can be a bit risky with driving around, taking chances and whatnot. And now I'm not saying this for everyone. Like there's a lot of people drivers in Japan that are nice and whatnot, but there's also a lot of drivers that don't really follow the rules that well. So <laughs> that was one thing that was kind of my criticism. Other than that, uh, touring around Japan and whatnot, that was really cool. With all the different sites and the shops, everything. And then, of course, we got on the plane to get back to the USA, which was also a bit interesting. It got a little bit rocky over there, and I was, like, freaking out because I mostly haven't had much plane, uh, much experience with flying planes. So, before the Japan trip, I've only been on a plane once, and that was when I had to go on a trip to Arizona to visit some old friends, and that was, that was years and years ago, maybe like the early 2000s or so, you know. I'm pretty sure this was definitely right before 9-11, so yeah, that was years and years ago, but yeah, doing this plane thing now, I'm slowly kind of getting used to it, so yeah, if I decide to go to Japan again, then yeah, I wouldn't mind sitting on a 13-hour plane trip and whatnot, but yeah, then of course... When it came to Japan and all the stuff they had selling and whatnot, we had to do, well, I pretty much had to buy basically what I could. I wasted so much money over there. Like, a lot of Pokemon stuff, too, because there's, like, Poke Centers that sell lots of Pokemon merchandise. And with, with Pokemon's current generation, I don't really keep that. I'm kind of uh, lost. I don't really follow that well with Pokemon. I'm more familiar with the first 150 Pokemon from Generation 1. But then after that, it's more of a hit and miss. It's like, oh yeah, there's Totodile, and there's Chikorita, there's um, Piplup, and this and that. And then other times, it's like, oh, there's Giraffe Thing, and Key Thing. Like, seriously, there's a Pokemon that is just a set of keys. I find that pretty weird. But yeah, with this current generation, I don't really follow that much, but it seems like the Pokemon I just became a fanboy for was uh, Pablio, the little sea lion. You can kind of see back there. It's kind of a bit of a spoilers for upcoming videos, where that's my giant Pablio plush toy I bought over there. But yeah, I'm a, fan, a bit of a fanboy for him, and I bought so much Pablio stuff over there, because I just think he's so freaking adorable. But yeah, after this, I've, um... So, that pretty much wraps up most of my takes with going to Japan. It was very nice, very, really cool. Bought so much stuff over there that I'm planning to make a few videos showing off all the stuff, like... Obviously the giant Pablio over there, and all the games. Cause I got quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of games that I'll be featuring on Forgotten Media in the future. But yeah, then after that I'll be getting around to doing the 75th episode special of Forgotten Media because I just finished uh, scripting it. So I'll go over like going over it again to see what needs changes, and then after that, then I can start filming it. Hopefully before I go back to college. Yay. That's going to be quite the experience, going back to college. Hopefully the last time. I'm almost done with my degrees and whatnot, so... It'll be quite interesting, getting out of college, and then trying to survive on my own, and finding my own apartment, and not living at my parents' house for, like, who knows how long. Eh. <laughs> but anyway, that's the end of for this uh, update video. Yeah, it's about the same like the last time. Boy, I tend to go on so long. But anyway, that's about it. I'll be doing some videos, hopefully making some videos soon with stuff from Japan and the 75th episode special. So until then, this is MeltingMan234, sayonara, or goodbye, or whatever. But yeah, see you soon.